What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com back with another SketchUp extension tutorial for you. So in today's video I want to talk a little bit more about using quad face tools and quad base modeling inside SketchUp and kind of what some of the benefits of that are, the way that that works, that kind of thing. And before we get started, today's video is brought to you by the SketchUp Essentials course. The SketchUp Essentials course is a course I created to give you a start to finish training in SketchUp. So if that's something you're interested in, you want to take your SketchUp training to the next level, make sure you check that out at the sketchupessentials.com slash course. I will note that registration for the course is closing later today. So if that's something you want to check out, make sure you go check it out today. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so I want to talk a little bit about quad face tools, which is TomTom's uh, quad modeling extension. It's actually really powerful and it kind of helps you with a different kind of modeling. Um, so the way that we're going to so quad base modeling is basically when your geometry is made up of four-sided shapes as opposed to three-sided shapes. Um, and so what that does is when you model with four-sided instead of three-sided, the shapes are kind of uh, predictable, meaning that your tools can do a lot of different things. So let, let's kind of jump into this and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So you can download quad face tools, the link in the notes down below. And uh, what it is is it's basically a tool set um, designed for working with quads. And so a quad in its simplest sense is just a shape that has four sides. So like this one right here, this would be considered a quad because it has four sides. And uh, quads have benefits. Um, I'm not sure if it's a mathematical thing or what, but they have benefits in the sense that since they act a certain way, um, these tools can give you a lot more functionality. So like for example, uh, right now if I wanted to split this box around the middle, what I would have to do is I would have to go and find the midpoint on the edge and draw a line all the way around and you know, if I really got tricky, I could draw a rectangle right here, but then I could take that and I could use that box that I created to adjust different things about my uh, about my shape. So like for example, if I was to do the same thing again, once I kind of scaled this in, and you can see how drawing this in is a little bit painful, it takes a lot of time, but then I could come in here and I could adjust this loop right here. So I could use the scale tool to scale that out. I could use the move tool to move this up and down. So you can see how you can use this kind of modeling to kind of rough out different shapes and uh, create different shapes using your geometry in here. But doing this is a little bit painful and a little bit annoying if you have to do it manually. Well, that's where quad face tools comes in. So let's say for example that I have a two foot by two foot rectangle and I push pull that up so that it's two feet high. Well, because this shape is made up of quads, you can use these tools inside of quad face tools um, to add things like loops and adjust your selections really easily. So remember how before what we did is we came in here and we clicked on, or we drew a line all the way around this edge. Well, because these are quads all the way around, I can just click, I can just select this edge and click on the button for insert loops. And so when I click on the button for insert loops, quad face tools knows that each one of these faces is a quad so it can find a path all the way around here and it can automatically split this shape into loops for me. So you can see how now I can do the exact same thing that I could do before where I can come in here and adjust this geometry. Whoops. And we'll want to select just this edge. But you can see how I could do the same thing that I did over here, but really quickly. And the nice thing about that is because all of these shapes are still quads, I can come in here and I can split these up just by selecting different edges and then using the insert loops function. So mathematically, because this is modeled with quads, um, this tool set can find these loops and add these loops, allowing you to add different things in here. And uh, you can see how I can just make these changes really easily. And I can do a lot of different things with this once I kind of wrap my mind around how to set this all up. And so what I want to point out though, and you may be thinking, well, that's great. Why don't I use it on all my shapes? Well, the reason you can't use it on all your shapes is if I look at my hidden geometry in this, um, 
this cone, for example, you can see how each one of these sides is a tri, not a quad. Well, since these sides are tries, if I try to insert my loops, it's not going to let me do that because it can't mathematically come in here and figure this out with the tries the way that it can the quads. So for right now, none of this is going to work. just because these are tries instead of quads. However, let's say I was to come in here and we'll draw a line down. You can see how I turned x-ray mode on because I want to draw a line straight down inside of this. And let's say, how many sides was this circle? It's a 24 sided circle. So let's say that I was to draw a 24 sided circle based on the middle here. And then we'll turn x-ray mode back off. But you can see how if I drew that 24-sided circle in here, this edge is now splitting these faces. Well, now each one of these faces is made up of a four-sided shape. Well, now I could come in here and you can see how inserting my edge loops would actually work because these are quad shapes. And so this works both sideways like this and also vertically. So if I was to click, instead of clicking on one of these, if I was to click on one of these edges, and click insert loops, it's gonna insert the loop wherever it can figure out that the quads are. So in this case, it's only able to figure out that from here to here, these are made up of quads, so it can only split that along here. So hopefully this is making sense. I'd like to do kind of more of a series on this whole thing um, and talk about quad face modeling. I haven't quite figured out what that looks like yet because this is kind of a complex topic. Um, but you can see how if you were to draw a cylinder and then extrude it up, and you can see how I've turned the hidden geometry on, each one of these faces is made up of a quad face. So when you extrude this up, this makes a series of rectangular edges. Well, because of that, it's really easy to come in here and use these tools. So you can see how I can split that. I could also come in here and split this if I wanted to. Um, you can see how splitting up these faces gets really easy. Easy. And I want to talk about a couple of the other tools and quad face tools as well. So like for example, let's say I have this sphere. And spheres are interesting in SketchUp because everything up until the very top is made up of quads. So so all of the edges from here, all the, or all of the faces from here all the way down to here are quads, and then these end pieces are um, tries. So quad face tools doesn't really work on those, but. Um, it's just something you have to be aware of when you start working with these. But let's take a look at the selection options inside of this. So before. Um, we were just inserting a loop. Well, there's also a pair of options up here for select rings and select loops. And so what that allows us to do is if I select an edge and I tell it to select the loop, this is going to go through and it's going to find the whole loop contained in here. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to find basically the extension of this edge that you had selected all the way until you run into a shape that isn't a quad or until um, this selection runs into itself again. So, and this works for multiple different selections. So let's say for example that I wanted to select all of these edges like this. I would do select loop and you can see how this goes in and this finds all of those different loops. And there's also an option in here for grow ring or shrink ring. And so what that does is if I select this loop and then I click on the button for grow ring, that's going to go find the next iteration of it, it it's going to go find the next set of edges that are also a loop. So you can see how as I click this grow ring, um, this is going out and it's getting one more and one more. Um, so you can use this to select different things and edit them inside of, um, inside of your quad base shapes really easily. And then you can also do this with faces. So if I click on this face and then I click on um, select loop, what that's going to do is that's going to find all of the connected loops um, for that face. Well, since this is a face and it has four sides, it found a loop that goes all the way around here. It also found a loop that goes in here. And so the, the reason this is important is because it can save you a ton of time. So let's say, for example, that I wanted to 
create like a pair of seams or something like this on this sphere. So if I was to select these two edges, for example, we're going to go back and we're going to use our insert loops function again. You can see how when we use the insert loops function, that inserts a complete loop going all the way around the circle. And then I'm going to do the same thing one more time. So I'm going to select the edge that's a little further um, from my new loop. Then I'm going to insert another loop. So what that's going to allow me to do when I turn my hidden geometry off is because this took a loop and inserted it all the way around my sphere, you can see how I can select this. Well, when I can select this, when this is an individual face like this, I can use another extension called Joint Push Pull. And I could actually come in here and I could push pull these curved faces so that they get narrower allowing me to create this kind of recess into this shape that I couldn't normally create. Um, or I guess I could, but it would take a lot of selection work. Well, you can see how I can do that really easily in here. And so let's say that we were to turn our hidden geometry back on and we were to add a pair of loops. Right here. And then we'll turn our hidden geometry back off. And we'll talk about what happened up here in a second. But I could take these edges and I could push pull them in or out as well. So you can see how this is great for like adding different recesses and other things like that. And you may have to do a little bit of a uh, geometry cleanup when you do this. Uh, it shouldn't be very much, um, but just kind of keep an eye on that as you're modeling so that it doesn't get out of control. Whoops. But you can see how if I click up here, I'm not getting this uninterrupted face up here anymore. The reason for that is because again, if we turn our hidden geometry off and we look at this, um, this doesn't really know what to do with these edges up here because they're tries. So what we would have to do is we would have to go in and kind of close this shape off just by drawing these edges in here. And now if we turn our hidden geometry off, these are in here as their own faces and you can kind of work from there. So, and, and this works for other shapes as well. Like for example, um, I extruded this shape up and it's just like a hexagon. Um, so a six sided shape, but you can see how SketchUp is very predictable in the way that it creates that. So I can definitely come in here and so I can definitely come in here and add those edge loops in here as well. And I'm not gonna get too far into this one right now, but um, when you take a shape like this one and uh, it's modeled with quads and then you use an extension like sub D, which is the organic subdivision extension or something like artisan, then you can take this and you can subdivide this shape and uh, create more of an organic shape. And you might come in here and maybe like crease the edges on the bottom so that they don't really adjust, but you can see how you can use this to create different more organic shapes. I'm using this as well. So I guess this turned into more of a concept video, but leave a comment below. Let me know if you found this helpful, um, if you understand the concept of quad-based modeling, and also if you'd like to see more tutorials like this in the future. I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider subscribing supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.